Hey everybody, this is uh, the video I wanted to create for after uh, April 11th, our class on April 11th, which was just awesome. I just, I had so much fun and I was so inspired by, you know, just every everybody willing to participate and having people come up and perform. And uh, maybe we could do more of that in our last class. So one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, first of all, was I should have brought home a Zoom handheld to the H6, and I didn't. So I was going to kind of record how we set that up, but I put two YouTube videos up on Blackboard, and they're right at the very top. They're in Docs and Resources. And uh, let me see. Let me turn on my cursor here so that I can... Uh, can see it a little bit better. Okay, so... Uh, if you go to Docs and Resources and then you click on Basic fun Functions, this is from a university. This is from Smith College. High quality professional portable audio recorder. This video is designed to introduce. It's going to take you through the basics. It's going to talk a little bit about these <clears throat> attachable and detachable micro uh, external mics that you can put on the top. At this point, I guess we're not allowed to use them. I, I'm going to work on that. Uh, because I think you should. They're, they can be useful, especially in um, capturing sounds in nature. I use them a lot. I was just out a couple days ago. The red-winged blackbirds have returned, thank God. And I love the, 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 the songs that they sing. And uh, I went out to record them the other day, and I got a lot of great uh, audio with my Tascam, which has similar external mics just like that. So that's there. And also, if you are struggling with phantom power, because I think a lot, most of these units have phantom power turned on because we use those condenser microphones or people take them out with the condenser microphones. So I also put this Here we have these gentleman up. Six in a condenser microphone. That and this gentleman will show you how to switch that on and off. And of course, you're going to want to turn that on if you have a condenser microphone but if you have a dynamic microphone like the ones we like the one we were singing into which is not does not need that 48 volts phantom power then in that input that you would put that microphone into you would not have the phantom power on so there's a way to do that and he shows you how to do that in there and then let's go to our audition program let me resize this a little bit so that it makes sense I should have done, done this before I clicked record. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. I'll just drag it out a little bit here. And we go into multi-track. And we call this, I think we called it guitar or whatever. Let's call it, let's call it live in Lowell Get the spell correctly and then uh, I put it in downloads and we have no template we have 44100 as our sample rate we have bit depth 16 and I think we did mono but I, I'm just going to stick with mo uh, I think we did stereo in class I'm going to stick with mono I'm just going to hit OK so now I get my multi-track view and the file was a wonderful track from Anthony. So I'm going to drag that right in <clears throat> and dump that right in there. And thank you, by the way, to Giancarlos for engineering all that. And then as we were going through class, he jumped ahead and he took, all, he took everybody's tracks and mixed them and did a wonderful job. And I I will put that, I think I'll put that up in Blackboard too. And then also Dennis did a wonderful job. He took Anthony's track and put the music under it and just blended it really, really well. So thanks to both of you. Uh, but here it is. Here's the track in there. The, one of the things that I did show in class that I want to repeat here is how to make a marker. Uh, I'm going to use Callie's little trick and I'm going to go on to my keyboard and I'm going to hit the key that has the the straight slash and the backslash and that pulls my view right out and now I see the entire file 
And of course I can move my playhead anywhere I want. And I can hit my space bar to start and stop. This time and stay selfish. We can work it out. We can work it. Now, I'm for this purposes of this video, I'm not going to drop the audio track in there. I just want to show you a couple of things that we did in class. This is going to be a shorter video. Probably. So we did uh, markers. Like if I'm at 130. We stop wasting time. In and that wasting time right there at that point there, I just, for some reason, I want to make note of that. I want to make a marker there. I'm going to hit the shift key and the M key. Shift M. And you can see it created a marker right there. And it's, it, it defaults to track 01, CD track 01. But I want to change that. So I'm going to go over here because I'm, I've selected markers here. And if I just click right on that, I can change it. So I'm just going to say last edit because that is what I most typically use. I think I said this in class when I take a break and I've been editing for a couple of hours and I take a break. I just want to know when I come back to the computer for any reason, if, you know, it crashes or whatever, I want to know where, where the last point that I was editing is, is at. So that helps me. And now you can use this for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, I forget who in class. Oh my gosh. Uh, somebody brought it up that if you are sharing this uh, project file with other people, they can see these and you can say, you know, hey, do, do your thing, you know, do some compression at this point or put some reverb here or, you know, they may have uh, uh, some messages for you that they want to put up there too with certain markers. But it, it really, it's better than saying, Hey, when he says, I went and got on the bus, you know, and it's a 40 minute file, that's ridiculous. You're going you're gonna to go in there and try to find out where he said that. You got markers. You can put it right, right at the timestamp and get right to it. The other thing was we talked about metadata. And in this panel here um, is metadata. I was clicking on the wrong thing. So you could, and, and <clears throat> it may default to BWF, <clears throat> excuse me, go to ID3, ID3 tags. And we could title this. We could say, Blunt. oh, wait a minute, he's the artist. So this is probably, let me know. <clears throat> I'm just guessing what the title of that piece is. And of course, it's int. And the album was live in, oops, in Lowell. You can tell I did not take typing in high school or ever. And I think Ant said it was R&B, so we'll just say it's R&B. We could put a lot of different other information in here, too, if we wanted to. But just you, so you know, this will end up in the file. So if, for example, I'll just drop this down here for a moment, and we'll take a look at any music file that I have that I have kicking around here. Um, Sweet Smoke Live. Let's see. Did they use metadata? It gives you to create a title, shade out, map, sweet, yep, author, sweet smoke, gives you the duration, gives you copyright. Look at that. I picked the right file. So this is all, of, yeah, genre is rock, composer. Oh, look at that. Year recorded, comment. They have the Amazon song ID in there too, which is, must be some reason they did that. But this, um, was done most likely in an editor in a section like this. So that shows up there. That's why it's important. Some of the other things that we did in class, and I was kind of milling around a little bit, and Callie was up there uh, um, doing a lot of great stuff. But I think she compressed this file, so we're getting really good at that. Um, let's just take a quick look at how we're going to do that here with this file. It could use some compression. There's a couple of peaks. There's a couple of valleys there. 
So there's two ways to get to the, and we're going to do that in waveform. So there's a couple of ways to get the waveform. We could just click up here. Or I'll go back and we could double click in the track anywhere. And then I'm going to go up to my effects across the top. I'm going to go to amplitude and compression. I know you know this. We're going to go to dynamics. Here's my window. I have compressor set. It's these things tend to be sticky when you're working on your own machine, when you have Audition working on your own machine. So it remembered my last compression. I used setting quite a bit. And for some reason, I cranked this up. Uh, the other day, I was having trouble with a file, but I'm going to bring it back down to 18. Or so. And I'm going to hit apply. I got a little bit of makeup gain there. It's a little too much. I'm going to go back down to about 7 dB or so. And look at that. Wow. That worked out really well. So now when I go back into multi-track, I'm actually going to see that change there. And I might, yeah, let's play it and see what we got for levels. Oh, this time you stay selfish. We can work it out. We can work. I like that. Um, I think I might put. I, I think I might put a limiter on that. I could crank it down here. Uh, but let's not do that. Let's take the opportunity to go into the effects rack here. And now we're making edits in multi-track, and these will be editable. They're non-destructive. So let's go here to Amplitude and Compression. I clicked on this first bay here, and I'm in a Hard Limiter. Hard Limiter. And I'm going to crank this down to minus 12. And I'm going to play it, and I'm going to watch that, and I should have slammed the door right at minus 12. Let's see if that worked. We can grow. Uh, we can grow. We can grow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay, so that worked. And now that I've done that, I can toggle that on and off here. I can do that while I'm listening, too. I can see the difference. Hate on me. That's off. Low key, low key. That's Your back on. So bitter, sweet, so sweet. Okay, so, uh, Anthony, wonderful voice. Uh, you know, do we need to EQ it? Do we need to put reverb on it? It's all a matter of taste. Um, it is a little dry, and that room is not an ideal recording room. However, that microphone, that SM58, liked your voice a lot. I think that was a good choice for you. There are other vocal mics, but um, I think that I think it's sounding pretty good. That overhead HVAC noise wasn't. It's there, but it wasn't bleeding through so much. And I think part of that was because we're picking up the music that was coming out of the ceiling speakers that Callie had put up. And that is here. You can barely hear it. Well, that was her talking, but here it comes. The guitar. So let's say we want, let's just say we want to put some reverb on it. So let's go. We're on this track. It's the only track we're, have up here right now, but we're on this track because we have that lit up as green there. If, if we were here, we'd be on that track. If we were here, we'd be on that track. So let's just make sure, be aware of that. And then let's go into reverb. And let's see what we get when we go to studio reverb. There's Now there's ch always choices in these panels. So if you go right to the tippity top, it should go to default. Here's a, ooh, a drum plate, a great hall, an outside club, room ambience one, room ambience two, swirly reverb, vocal reverb, large, medium, and small. Let's try this vocal reverb small, and let's keep the panel up, shall we? And let's just play by pressing the space bar. Let 
That's not a bad sound. It, it, it's, uh, the difference, when you add reverb, by the way, the terminology is without any reverb, that was a very dry sounding track. When you put weeb reverb on there, it's wet sounding. So that's the terminology that we use, dry and wet. So that's damp, I would say. It's, it's not overly saturated. There's a, it sounds like there's a little bit of slap back. Let's do this. Let's uh, see what happens when we put it on large. So I've changed this to large. And these are granular settings here. I'm, I'm just, these are presets. So this large sets these parameters up this way. And when you choose something else, you'll see those parameters change. All these dials and buttons here will change. But now let's hear this. That is... You know, that's rainy. It's raining on them. That's a little too much for me. Uh, so I think I, if I was going to do anything in this section here, I might use reverb small. I just want to hear what Outside Club sounds like just for the heck of it. And you should experiment with this stuff. Play around with it. It's a lot of fun. It's very powerful. Whoa! <laughs> That would be some crazy effect if you wanted to, I don't know, kind of create some kind of image, imagery or something like that. But uh, let's let's say we want to use the reverb small. So we have that effect. It is in the effects panel over here. It can be toggled on and off. By the way, I know I've told you this already, but let's let's go at it again. You can edit this effect again, even after you close this file, this project file, and come back in. And you can go back in and do all the changes like you're starting from scratch if you wanted to. You can also remove the effect if you want, or you can toggle it off and on, back on. So just a lot of flexibility there. Um, someone in class also mentioned, you know, if they want to, this is really the starting point right here, the playhead. So how do you get rid of all this stuff here? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. I thought you'd never ask. If you are in a time selection tool here and you just click and drag, you could shift command delete. And that's a ripple delete. I just brought everything back to zero. So I'm gonna undo that by using command Z on a Mac and you could drag this track inward from the edge. So when it turns into this little uh, bracket, this little red bracket with the arrow going to, to the right, you can drag this to the right. Now you created a gap here, which it's okay. Maybe you wanted that gap, but if you didn't, you are in your move tool and you just pull it back and voila, it's the same thing. Basically, there's two different ways to do that. There's more than that. And likewise, at the end, if we were at the end, we're going to want to keep the applause in there. Just hear how that just ended so abruptly. Oh, it's looping. Uh, I'm gonna fade the applause out. So let's go in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, zoom in a little bit, and I'm I'm pressing my plus key on my keyboard. And we have this nice applause at the end, and I'm just gonna go in and grab the volume bar and make a point on it, and I'm going to make another point on it, and I'm just going to see how that sounds. Yeah, it's good. That's pretty good. It's just a, It just ended too sharply for me, so just a little fine-tuning there. I think I'll stop the video at this point. Um, again, it was a great class, 
And uh, boy, I'm going to miss this class. Let's have a lot of fun on the last class. Um, I won't be here, as you know, uh, for the second to last class, but I'll be back at the end and we'll have pizza and we'll have a good time. Thanks for watching.